So the next part of syntheses that come from the second exam material involves cyclic esters, hemiacetals, and protecting groups. Now, before we talk about protecting groups, I want to address the first two of that list, the cyclic esters and hemiacetals, because usually they're the ones that are going to require you in synthesis to use a protecting group. So first of all, how do we break these apart? Because obviously we can't synthesize a six-member ring where there are oxygens involved. That's not quite a Diels Alder product anymore. So we have some extra rules here, and like how do we put these together, and make them into a carbon chain? Well, it's, it's fairly straightforward. So all I've done is I've numbered these carbons, and I've also numbered the oxygen that's part of the ring. So for this one now, it's numbered. What you are going to do is you're going to find the oxygen in the ring, and you're going to look for the single bond that connects it to another carbon with an oxygen on it. So in that case, it's the carbon one to six bond. That is the bond you are going to form going forward, or if you're going backwards like you would be in a synthesis problem, that is the bond you are going to break. So the way you can write this is start by just drawing everything exactly the same. Okay, and here's my oxygen, and let's number these again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now what you're going to do is you're going to erase the bond that connects the oxygen to the carbon with the carbonyl on it. And I'm just gonna draw this a little nicer so I have room. Okay, so, so I erase the bond that connects the carbon to the carbon the oxygen to the carbonyl. That oxygen that was part of the ring will now be an OH. And on the carbon that has a double bond O, you are going to draw another OH. So you should have a carboxylic acid and, and an OH. If you ever see a carbon chain that has an OH on one end and a carboxylic acid in the other, and then you have it treated with H+, you will end up forming a ring like this. And in a retrosynthesis, we're trying to build this, so going backwards, we use H+, to turn it back into this carbon chain. Now, what if we wanted to actually go forward from this to this? Well, turning it from the cyclic ring to this going forward would just be the use of H2, would just use the H2O. Okay? So pay attention to the direction of your arrows. If you're starting with the carbon chain and going to the ring, you use H+. If you're starting from the ring and going to the carbon chain going, in, going forward, you use H2O. Now you can do the same thing for this kind of a structure as well. Find the oxygen that's part of the ring. Find the single bond that connected to another carbon that has an oxygen on it, so that could be this one or this one, but you only choose one when it looks like this. So I'm going to choose the left side again, but I could have chosen the right side. And over the arrow, once again, goes H+. I'm going to redraw everything exactly the same, so oxygen, double bond O, double bond O. I'm going to erase the bond that I chose. So the bond between one and six, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. The oxygen that was part of the ring now is an OH, and the carbon that had the double bond O gets its own new OH, okay? So in this case, if you see a carbon chain that has two carboxylic acids on either end, and you treat that with H3O positive, you will form a ring that looks like this. While the size of the ring will vary based on how many carbons are in between the two carboxylic acids, this is going to be generally what your product should look like. And of course, if you want to go in the opposite direction, going forward, turning the ring back into the chain, not for retrosynthesis, you would use H2O again. Finally, this one. This one is slightly different in the fact that there's no double bond O, but the rules that I just gave you are mostly the same. You find the carbon, that has the oxygen on it, or has the oxygen in the ring, and then another oxygen attached to it. So here's my oxygen in the ring. Single bonded away is this carbon that shares another that has another oxygen on it. Now this right here is what we call a hemiacetal. Hemiacetals, you know, you can always recognize them because it's on one carbon there are two oxygens. One of those oxygens is an OH. And the other oxygen is an oxygen without a hydrogen. It's an oxygen with a carbon or a carbon chain, so an OR group. So that's our hemiacetal. Now, how do we break this apart? Going backwards. Well, once again, over the arrow, you're going to have H+. And what you go back to, well, once again, we're going to draw everything exactly the same. So I have a six-membered ring, and now I have an OH over here. And let's number our carbons again. We've got one, or I numbered it differently this time, one, two, three, four, five, and six, with the oxygen being six in the ring. 
Once again, what you will do now is you're going to erase the bond that connects the oxygen in the ring to the carbon with the other oxygen. But this time, and then that oxygen that was part of the ring will once again become an OH. But now what you're going to do differently is that carbon that has the OH, you're going to erase that hydrogen and make it now a C double bond O. So put a double bond there. And so this would be the two pieces that came, or this would be the thing that came together to make your hemiacetal. So the way you make a hemiacetal is you have a carbonyl on one end. Typically, or actually I shouldn't say typically, you have a carbonyl on one end and then just an OH on the other. And when they form a ring, you end up making a hemiacetal. And once again, if you couldn't guess it, the way we do it in the opposite direction, if we want to turn this from into this going forward, you just use H2O. So here are three different cyclic, here are two cyclic esters of a sort and one hemiacetal, and this is the way, the process you can use to break the things apart. Now let's actually see how do we work with syntheses on these.